Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's been a minute, but I am glad to see you. Welcome to the program. Welcome to the show. Before we talk about Rolex and what happened last night, let's do the quick fist watch check. And here it is. So what you're having a look at here, actually, guys, get the camera right up, right up on there. This is actually the first Rolex I ever purchased. You can see it's a little uh, loose. I, I need to get into the micro adjustments. This is a 1987 Rolex date. Believe it or not, it's only 34 millimeter. Bought this in uh, 1987. And back in those days, the cases were just full and you could buy any Rolex you wanted by pointing. But Rolex, 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 what have you done? And the answer is very little. <laughs> so uh, the 2024 Watches and Wonders is going on right now, and Rolex has kind of let us know what they're going to do, and it's an underwhelming year. I, actually, we'll talk about this in a minute, but I think Tudor kind of did the more interesting stuff this year for a change. Um, but first, let me tell you the thing that I'm happiest about and uh, most relieved about, and that is that uh, Rolex did not continue discontinue, did not discontinue the Oyster Perpetual 41 millimeter, the OP41 celebration dial. In fact, uh, they have that in multiple sizes. I, I know at least they have it in the 36 as well, and they didn't discontinue that one either. And I am mighty glad for that because I really hope to get that 41. And um, it's, you know, you can you can walk out of the AD with one of those after you pay tax for right around, I don't know, maybe $7,000. But on the secondary market, they're right around 20, 21, something like that. And I really, really didn't want to pay triple retail uh, for an OP. So here's hoping that I can get that watch. Now, uh, what's discontinued, the Yachtmaster 2, that 10 minute regatta timer which was really only good for timing pizzas, which coincidentally a frozen pizza takes 10 minutes in the oven. Don't ask me how I know. But um, so that complication was, you know, kind of useful for um, if you were, uh, you know, in the America's Cup or if you make the occasional frozen pizza, but it wasn't good for much else. Two sort of surprising moves. Uh, one is the Deep Sea Sea Dweller, which I have in its very first edition as the James Cameron. What is it, the 116660, oh, I think, something like that. I'll drop a picture of that in, and tell you the reference number for sure. But at any rate, I've got the first generation of the Deep Sea James Cameron. It's been available, it's, it's in its third iteration. They've kind of noodled around with the bracelet width, but it's essentially the same watch. Ever since they first introduced it, um, and really the only variations are it comes in a black dial or the slightly more desirable James Cameron dial, which fades from blue to, to black and uh, in a surprise move they've just come out with it in solid gold and I can tell you that in uh, just in stainless steel it's it's very heavy it's it's over 200 grams just in stainless steel um, so when they when when the solid gold one which curiously still has the titanium back as part of the ring lock system it's also cheaper than a gold back, so maybe that's got something to do with it too. Rolex, saving a penny, Un unlike Rolex, isn't it? But nonetheless, I think the gold deep sea, which is beautiful, uh, but is gonna be absolutely unwearable. I I'm sure it's gonna be somewhere in the 400 gram range. I, I think it's gonna be pushing, I think it's gonna be pushing about a full pound on the wrist. So it's, it's a luxury, it's engineering, it's also insanity. Okay, uh, what else did they do? Well, the Bruce Wayne is out now. Um, that is the, the GMT with the black bezel on top and the gray bezel on the bottom. Very attractive. They did it only in uh, precious metals and mixed metals last year, but uh, this year it has come out on stainless steel. Uh, I would love to have one of those. James and Son, if you're listening, uh, I would love to have one of those. Um, and I, I think that's gonna be a very hot watch. They did not discontinue the Sprite, which James and Sons also sold me here in Illinois. By the way, these are good people to deal with, so if you're in the area, in the Chicagoland area, feel free to give Brian a call over there. They may not have what you look, 
what you're looking for, but they will certainly treat you with dignity and tell you what they can do. Um, so there's that, that I think that the Bruce Wayne, it's going to be very popular. The Sprite still not discontinued. Will it ever be discontinued? I, I, I said when it first came out that I didn't see, think it would see its fifth birthday and I, I still don't, but we're, we're getting closer. <laughs> we're getting closer to that mark year by year. I think it's been out now, what, like three years. So I give it another couple of years, but it's Destro, it's left-handed, it's cool but it's divisive, it's Marmite, not everybody likes it, that's for sure. I like it quite a bit, but you know, not everybody does. I think the biggest surprise was what Rolex didn't discontinue, and that was the Pepsi. They've long been rumored that they were gonna discontinue the Pepsi. They did not discontinue anything in the GMT line, they simply added the Bruce Wayne. Um, so that, that line gets a little bit wider. That being said, the GMTs are really just still tough to get at the, um, at the AD. It seems as though production has been ramped up, so Rolexes are getting a bit easier to get. There, there's more and more stories of people getting hit up for, for their wish list or just walking into the store and being surprised with a watch. Tell me in the comments if you've, if you've gotten a Rolex that you didn't think you were gonna be able to get, or are you still on an interminably long wait list? Quick story. Uh, as you know, I'm a dog trainer, and I had a, a dog training client who um, who emailed me just about three days ago. He walked into his AD to get um, his Submariner steam cleaned. It was just a surprise, hey, how you doing, visit? Can you steam clean this for me? And his AD said, yeah, sure, I can do that, but look at what we just got, and you want to try this on? And the AD pulls out the titanium 42, min, min, the, the titanium 42 millimeter Yacht Master, which is almost an impossible buy. And it's a super hard to get watch that retails for, I wanna say, around $15,000. But they're so, they're, they're, what, a year old, I think? And they've, they're going on the secondary market for in the $40,000, $42,000 range. And my client was able to purchase this from the AD just over the counter on a surprise visit. And yes, he had a prior purchasing history, but um, but not like, you know, crazy enormous. So really some funny things are happening with Rolex supply. Tell, tell me what you think about that in the comments. Now, that being said, there are certain watches that are still really, really difficult to get. Um, and I think we can put the Daytonas at the top of that list and then the GMTs. Um, in Daytona, nothing spectacularly interesting happened other than they discontinued the Le Mans, which was only there for a year and nobody hardly ever saw one, except for uh, one crazy bird brain that I know and love uh, and, and good on him for getting it because that is going to go crazy, super collectible now. Uh, it, it's been trading on the secondary market for in the $125,000 range and I, that, that might double, so gonna be crazy. But as Jenny L just released information on, uh, there's an off catalog gold version of that coming um, in the fall, so craziness. They did not discontinue my 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 celebration dial, so I'm still hoping to get that. But they're they're not limited edition; they're just in very super low production. I think the most interesting thing that they didn't do was discontinue the Pepsi, and the second most interesting thing they didn't do was to introduce a Coke, which was the big rumor. That rumor was fed by supposed patents for a black and red a bezel and serochrome number one but also due to the fact that for quite a while there during 2023 ad's barely saw pepsis at all there were like no pepsis on the market so the theory was and, and i subscribed to this theory uh, also was that the rolex was had stopped production was funneling down uh, supply and was going to get rid of uh, the, the few that they had in order to introduce the coke but that's not what happened at all you know what did happen was Tudor. Tudor has pulled some really, really interesting moves lately, and one of them is that they came out with the Coke. <laughs> so Tudor has come out with the Coke um, with a aluminum bezel, but they did it not in the form factor of their Diet Pepsi GMT, which is kind of big and chubby, um, much like the um, 41 millimeter, I believe it is, um, Tudor Black Bay, the original one. Uh, but what they did instead was they put it into the form factor of the Black Bay 58, which is a great deal thinner and a great deal smaller. So I, I think that that new 
Tudor Coke is going to be a tremendous hit. Um, remember, guys, if you're interested in it, uh, what I would tell you is don't pay over retail. Do not, because here, here's what here's what Tudor usually does. They they make this cool new thing, and then they just dribble a couple of them to the ads in the first six or eight months. They're super hard to get, so some of them hit the hit the um, hit the the after sale market at you know over retail. Um, but if you just can stand to hang on 10, 12, 14 months, then Tudor will flood the market with them and they'll be in the cases everywhere. So uh, it, it's not going to be exclusive, but in the first part of the uh, first quarter or two of this year, yeah, it's going to be. So I would I would hold out on buying that if I were you. Just don't pay over retail. Go to your Tudor AD and express interest. The other uh, fascinating thing that Tudor has done is they've introduced the Barbie, uh, which is a, um, a chronograph the Tudor chronograph. Um, I have it in, uh, in Panda, bought it from the rancher, uh, but they've now come out with it in sort of a Pepto-Bismol Barbie <laughs> pink. Um, and right on their Instagram, Tudor said, if you don't like it, don't worry, you're probably never going to be able to get one anyway. I mean, that's not quite how they said it. They were a bit more polite, but what they did say is we'll be making very few of them. So I, I don't know if any will ever be seen, but remember what I said about Tudor and it's pseudo exclusivity guys it's an interesting day a lot happened i know this is just a quickie i'm sure we'll talk again more in the future keep an eye on this channel and um, give me a hello in the comments if you're happy to see me back let me know if you're not you can tell me that too just remember rolex and goldberg peace out